Today, we're wrapping up our series on, say it with me, we've been talking about, say it with me, peace, right? And this is the symbol for peace, and then also in World War II, it's the symbol for for victory. And the Bible teaches that if you and I are going to live a victorious life, then we've got to learn how to walk in peace. And so if you haven't been here over the past few weeks, hope you'll go online and watch and listen to those sermons. I really believe they will help you. We're wrapping up the series today, and we're going to talk about how to be a peacemaker. Because followers of Jesus, people who follow the Prince of Peace, ought to be people of, say it with me, of peace. We ought to be a blessing to all of those that we come in in contact with. We're to be ambassadors of peace. We're to carry peace. We're to bless people, encourage people. We're to be peacemakers in the world. We're to be people of of peace. Now, how many of you, all all locations, uh, you would consider yourself a Trekkie? Right? All the nerds, you're you're a Star Trek fan. Can I just see a show of hands here? Okay. All right. So so some of us are all right. I'm in that category. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd. So let me see if, if you recognize this. What, what does that mean? Right. That means live long and and prosper. And, and who says that? Right. Spock says that. That is a Vulcan greeting right there. In fact, if you want, you can just turn to somebody next to you. All locations. It's OK. We're in church. I'm going to explain this here in just a moment where it came from. But turn to somebody next to you and, and, and just do that signal. Right. If, if you can. And just tell them live long and prosper. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Live long and, and prosper. Here's, here's where this came from. Uh, Leonard Nimoy, who played Dr. Spock on Star Trek, when he was a, a young boy, uh, he was in a Jewish worship service. And at this particular part of the service, uh, you were to cover your eyes, you were to cover your head, and the rabbis would chant some things in Hebrew. And you're not supposed to look, but when Leonard Nimoy was a boy, he decided he would look, and, and he pulled the cover off of his head at this particular part of the worship service. He was supposed to keep it covered, but he didn't. He pulled it off of his head, and he actually peeked, and he looked. And the rabbi, as the rabbi was speaking some things in Hebrew, had his hands out like this over the people. This symbol is actually a Jewish symbol for blessing. Did you know that? And literally, it comes from this word. It's the word shalom. The word shalom means may you be full of well-being, may health and prosperity be upon you. May you, right, live long and prosper. This is actually a symbol of shalom. This is a symbol of, of blessing. Peace to the maximum. Peace in, in your very being. And then also health and prosperity. Shalom, right? Live long and, and prosper. Now think about this for a second. Shalom in Hebrew, that first part, Shah, represents the presence of God. So in that worship service that Leonard Nimoy was in as, as a child, uh, they were ushering in by that worship celebration. They were, they were praying. They were ushering in the presence of God. And in that we experience peace. And so this was a symbol of blessing. And and I saw an interview with Leonard Nimoy and he talked about how, you know, when people were watching Star Trek, they would begin to wave at him like this, right? On the, on the street. And then all the Trekkies, right? When they go to the convention, right? The Trekkie convention, all the nerds are there, you know, they, they do this to one another, live long and prosper. They're actually blessing one another and they don't even know it. So here, here's what we've got. You ready? Peace, victory. Here we go. Blessing. Blessing. What does it mean to be a person of blessing? What does it mean to to bless people in your life? Because we're to be peacemakers. Followers of the Prince of Peace ought to be people of peace. So let's talk about it today. Being a person of blessing, being a peacemaker. If you brought your Bible, we're in Philippians chapter 4. We've been in this chapter in the Bible throughout this whole series because in Philippians chapter 4, we find the prescription for peace. Philippians chapter 4, if you don't have your Bible, you can also follow along with me here on the screen or on the Sun Valley app. Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 4, and in these verses, we find the prescription for peace. Follow along with me. Here's what your Bible says. Rejoice in the Lord always. 
I will say it again, rejoice. And again, to rejoice is to rejoy. It's to return. It's to remember. And in that, find joy and peace. Rejoice, return, remember, rejoy. Verse 5, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. I'm going to ask if you would, verse 5, let's read that again, all of us, all locations, out loud together. Read it with me, beginning with the word let. Verse 5, read it with me. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. We're to be people of peace. Why? Because when we're people of peace, it reveals that God is with us. Verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the, look at this, the peace of God, the peace of God, the shalom, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Paul says, whatever, because he wrote this, right? Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the peace of God will be with you. So here's what we just read, right? Let your gentleness be evident to all. Why? Because the Lord is near. When you and I are ambassadors of peace, when we are ambassadors of gentleness, it reveals that God is with us. And then the Apostle Paul towards the end of that run says, hey, look at me. If you've seen it in me, if you heard it from me, then put it into practice. Because if you're a person of peace, this is what Paul is saying, because if you're a person of peace, if you're a peacemaker, Paul says, like he's been a peacemaker, right, then the God of peace will be with you. Then the God of peace will be with you couple of thoughts, and then I want to give you four things that we'll write down in our notes. If you're new, uh, the notes, you got that in the program that you received when you came in. You can follow along with me here in just a second. I'll give you some blanks to, to fill in. You can also take notes on, on the Sun Valley app. Uh, first thing, when we talk about being a peacemaker, uh, just for all the men, to be a peacemaker uh, does not mean uh, to be wimpy or, or passive, okay? Peacemaking is not for pansies, all right? Peacemaking is, is for the strong. The only way that you can be a peacemaker is to be a person of peace, which means that you're being a peacemaker from a source of strength. Making peace is for the strong. Think about this with me, all the guys, okay? So when we talk about peacemaking here in just a second, I don't want you to think, you know, Christianity is for wimps or any of that. It's not. It's for warriors. Peacemaking is, is for, the, for the strong, Okay? Think about Jesus here for a second. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Jesus is not weak. The Bible says that when he came the first time, right, he came as a baby in a manger. But when he comes back, he's not coming as a baby in a manger. He's coming as a warrior. The Prince of Peace is also the Lion of, of Judah. Peacemaking is not for pansies. Peacemaking is for the, for the strong. So when we talk about being a person of peace and let your gentleness be evident to all, that comes from, listen, that comes from a source of strength. Here's the other thought that I want to share with you before I give you the four things. A lot of people have this idea that if you are a, and I'm going to use these terms, okay, and they mean different things to different people, all right, but people have this idea, especially in our society today, that if you are an evangelical Christian, then that means that you're probably a jerk for Jesus, right? Right? So Jesus has all these jerks, right, who, who fight and wave a particular flag, you know, it, it, as far as ideology and all this kind of stuff, and they just yell at people, and, and there's picket signs with, you know, uh, so-and-so is going to go to hell because of, and on and on and on and on it goes. Let me just tell you right now, followers of the Prince of Peace are people of peace, which means there's no such thing as a jerk for Jesus, there's no such thing as a jerk for Jesus. Let me show you this verse of scripture. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. These are the words of Jesus as they come here on the screen. Follow along with me. Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they will be called children of God. Read this verse out loud with me. We're going to keep it here on the screen. Read it out loud with me. Read it with me. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Here's literally what Jesus is saying. You ready? You can spot a child of God by how they make peace. Which means children of God are not jerks for Jesus. There is no such thing. Followers of Jesus are people of peace. Children of God, followers of Jesus are peacemakers. Now think about this for a second. He says, blessed are the peacemakers. I've never met a troublemaker that was blessed. Just think about that for a second. Blessed are the peacemakers. Have you ever met a troublemaker that was happy? No. Have you ever met a troublemaker that was at peace? Content. All the things we've been talking about over the past few weeks. No. Here's why. It's not God's will for you to be a troublemaker. It's God's will for you to be a peacemaker. And being a peacemaker is for your good because bring, being a peacemaker will bring more peace in your life. So what are you saying, Pastor Chad? I'm saying be very careful out there on social media, whichever platform you use. Be very careful out there with how you represent your faith because we are a people, followers of Jesus, who are to be known for, catch this, our love for one another and for the world. Blessed are the peacemakers. Why? Because they'll be called children of God. If you're going to represent Jesus, you're going to be a representative of, say it with me, right, peace. Peace. You're going to be a representative of shalom. You're going to be a person of blessing. That brings life. That brings hope. That brings good to the world. There is no such thing as a jerk for Jesus. Let me give you four things here about peacemakers. And again, you can follow along with me here in the notes. But these are some things to think about. Peacemakers. Four things about peacemakers. Number one, here in your notes. Peacemakers are full of peace. Peacemakers are full of peace. Now you might be thinking, well, I'm full of something. Right? Okay, if you're a follower of Jesus and you're getting to know him and you're really understanding who he is, here's what happens. Peace is going to begin to grow in, in, in your life. It could be that some of us are not peacemakers and the reason we're not peacemakers is because we're not full of peace. It could be that you've never come to a point in your life where you've really surrendered to the peace that God offers you. And it's going to be really hard to be a peacemaker. Here's why. If you're not full of peace, you can't give anybody peace because you can't give someone something that you don't have. Which begs the question, are you full of peace? We've talked about this over the past few weeks, but let me kind of give it to you in a sound bite. Peace and hope are like kissing cousins. They just go together. Where you put your hope is where you're looking to find peace. So if you're not full of peace today, here, here would be my, my question. Uh, where have you placed your hope? Another way to say that is, is what is your faith resting in? Now here's the thing. Everybody on the planet is a person of faith. Because everybody is trusting in something. Everybody has put their hope in something. Even if you're here today and you're not a Christian, you've put your hope in something. You've put your faith in something to bring peace and contentment and satisfaction to your life. Think about it with me. Some people put their hope in money. And so it's hard to be at peace when your hope is in money because peace and hope are kissing cousins. If your hope's in money, you're going to be really, really anxious when the market is bad. And you're going to be really, really anxious when the market is good. Because when the market is good, sooner or later, where's it going to go, right? It's going to go down again. It's going to go bad. And you'll never be on solid ground. Why? You can't be at peace if your hope is in, is in money. Some of us, if I could be real honest, and you could call yourself a Jesus follower, but your real hope is in government. Your hope is in politics. 
I mean, functionally speaking, the way your life works, you spend a whole lot more time listening to political news than you do reading and learning about the Prince of Peace, who is, who is Jesus. And as a result, you are not a person of peace. You're at war on social media. You're at war with people who think different than you. And anybody who thinks different than you, you just automatically assume they're an idiot. Be really careful with that. You're not going to have any peace there. Why? Because peace and hope are kissing cousins. Your hope is in the wrong place. And you may say it's this, but really it's in politics, right? Instead of the prince of, of peace. Where's, where's your hope? What are you feeding your mind with, right? You want to think about what you're, what you're thinking about. For some of us, it's in money. For some of us, it's, it's in politics and government. For some of us, we've placed our hope in another human being. Be really careful with that. Because human beings are, are flawed. And if you've put all of your hope in, in another human being to complete you, to, to make you fully happy, to make you content, I'm not happy because they're not. I'm not content because they're not. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. And that's why I'm so miserable, right? And what you're doing is you're playing the blame game. And can I just tell you, blame is lame. Just think about how the word is spelt, blame. Be lame. There you go. Blame is lame. If you are putting your hope in another human being to bring contentment and peace to your life, two things will happen. Number one, you'll be constantly frustrated and disappointed. And number two, you're going to overwhelm the other person. Because no other human being can completely satisfy your soul. Peace and hope are kissing cousins. What you want to do, listen is you want to be full of peace. Here's how you be full of peace. You put all your hope in the Prince of Peace. I'm a child of God. We talked about this last week. That's who I am. And can I just tell you, when you find your identity there, if your identity is in performance or, or, or in money or, or in politics or in another person, you will always be on shaky ground. But if who you are, who I am, who you are rests in Jesus and the Prince of Peace, I'll just tell you, that's the only thing that will never change. Put your hope in the right place. And you'll begin to experience peace all over the place. Hope and peace. are Kissing cousins. They just go together. Where you place your hope, where you place your faith is extremely important. Peacemakers are full of peace. Number two, peacemakers offer people a piece of encouragement. I kind of did a play on words there, right? They offer people a piece of encouragement. Peacemakers are encouraging people. Uh, our words are extremely powerful. If you're taking notes out to the side, you can write this next to number two. Your words can bring life or death. You can bless people or curse people. If you're a Sun Valley person, if you're here today and you're a guest with us, I'm so glad that you're with us. Let me just speak to the Sun Valley family here for just a moment. If you are a Sun Valley person, this is your church. As your pastor, can I, just, can I just tell you this? Can I just challenge you with this? If you're a Sun Valley person, here's what I challenge you to be. You ready? Be a person of blessing. Be a person of blessing. Uh, a few years ago, it was summertime, and I was, I was speaking at a, a camp over in Southern California. And I was off uh, on a walk. I, I like to hike. I like to be outside in, in nature. I talk about that somewhat regularly here in our church. And on this walk, I, I was praying about the future, and I was actually praying about the next uh, five years here in the life uh, of our church. In, in fact, uh, the Next Chapter Initiative, many of you are involved in that. Thank you for that. Please continue to give and fulfill your commitments and all that. We've got about six months left. But the Next Chapter Initiative came out of this time with God at this camp. And God, what do you have for us uh, the next five years? But one of the things that I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me about is the Holy Spirit, God, wants me to be a person of blessing. What does that mean? Everywhere I go, I want to be an encouragement to somebody. Everywhere I go with my mouth, I want to speak life into somebody. And you want to be that too. It's part of what it means to follow Jesus. You want to be a person of blessing. Here's how you can practice this this week. I wrote a few things down. Um, I want to challenge you to encourage three people every day. 
Encourage three people every day. Let me give you some thoughts. All right, you can do that with a compliment. You never know what a blessing a compliment is to somebody, an appropriate compliment, all right? Uh, encourage somebody at, at work that's doing a good job. Uh, encourage uh, somebody on the ball team that your kid plays on. Encourage your kid always, right? But encourage some other kid that you've seen making Im improvement. Just look for opportunities to encourage somebody. Uh, biggest part of this homework, encourage people in your home. Encourage your kids, encourage your spouse, encourage your siblings, encourage uh, one of the pastors, uh, one of the people on staff here at church, encourage uh, some of the volunteers here at church. Church, Be a person of encouragement, compliment somebody. Uh, you can do this to be a person of blessing, to offer people a piece of encouragement. You can thank someone. Uh, when's the last time you just looked somebody in the eye, you smiled, and you said thank you? Uh, maybe sometime this week, you could write somebody a thank you note or a note of, of encouragement. Uh, one way that you can encourage somebody is just to tell them you're praying for them. And even in that moment, pray for them. Uh, there's a lot of times here at the church, if somebody says, you know, Pastor Chad, will you pray for me? I'll say yes, and then I'll just do it right then. There was a time when I'd say, yeah, I'll pray for you, and then I'd forget about it. So right now, right, if you say, hey, will you pray for me, usually I'm going to put my hand on your shoulder right then, and I'm just going to pray for you right there. Uh, I make a little note on, on my phone. You know, notes is an option on your phone, and I just write people that ask me uh, to pray for them. I just write their name down, and just every morning I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through that. But pray for somebody. Listen, be a person of blessing. Offer people peace. Be a peace ambassador. Be a peace carrier and offer people a peace of encouragement. Be a person of blessing, right? Live long and prosper. You want to bless people with your life. It's part of what it means to follow Jesus. Number three, peacemakers also, number three, offer people a piece of value. Offer people a piece of value. What, what does it mean? Uh, Jesus followers value people because... Because, in the end, all that matters is God and people. God loves people more than anything. So offer people a piece of value. How do you do that? Uh, you listen to people. If you're taking notes, write this down. To listen is to love. To listen is to love. Uh, listening is a lost art in modern times. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. Sometime this week, or as you have opportunity, uh, listen to somebody you disagree with. And here's what you're listening for. Don't listen for a hole in their argument so you can, right, come back with your retort, right? And you're not getting into a debate. But listen to understand. Listen to understand their perspective. Uh, I was talking with somebody a, a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, we all have our political leanings. And I intentionally do not talk much about politics in church. Here's why. Because uh, I'm just trying to get everybody into heaven. You with me? Okay, and if I start talking about politics, immediately I'm, I'm polarizing people, and politics are not the hope of the world. Uh, Jesus is the hope of the world, so as your pastor, I'm going to spend all my time talking about Jesus, okay? You good with that? All right, because that's how I'm going to roll, okay? But I, I, I do have uh, my political beliefs, and I was talking to a friend of mine who has some different political beliefs, and the beautiful thing in this conversation is we were listening to one another, and here's what I figured out, you ready? Uh, he and I, we want the same things. Like, actually, when it came to, to what we want and what we want in society and what we want uh, in, in our country, it, it, it wasn't that different. What we disagreed on is how to get from where we are to where we both believe we should be. But quite frankly, we kind of met in the middle on all kinds of things. If there was ever a time in our nation where people of peace were needed, it's right now. Be a person of peace. And in that, represent Jesus well. To listen is to love. Write this down if you're taking notes. You can love someone you disagree with. Jesus did it all the time. I can love people I disagree with. In fact, everybody lean in, all right? So if you're married or you want to be married someday, you got to learn how to do that. Love somebody you disagree with. Can I get a witness? Right? Don't look around right now. Just look right at me. 
But somewhere in our society, we, we've forgotten how to get along. And everybody's got their battle lines drawn, right? And everybody's got their own little tribe. As a Jesus follower, can I just tell you, be very careful with that. My goal is never for you to think more conservative or more liberal. My goal is always for you to think more biblical, all right? And to follow Jesus. If you're a Jesus follower, really, come on. You don't live in a democracy. You live in a monarchy where Jesus is king. So let's represent the Prince of Peace well by offering people a piece of value. Listen to them. Don't automatically dismiss them as a human being. Th think about this for a moment. Write this down if, if, you, want to, if you want to and you're taking notes. Uh, you can't give someone dignity. All you can do is recognize it in them as a person who was created in the image of God. I'm going to say it again. You cannot give somebody dignity. All you can do is recognize it in them as a person created in the image of God. Listen, listen. You've never laid eyes on, you've never laid eyes on someone who Jesus did not die for. He cares for everybody. And as his followers, so should, should we. You want to value people. Why? Because our Savior, our Lord values people. Offer people a peace, a value. Number four, the last one. Peacemakers, number four. Offer people the Prince of Peace. Offer people the Prince of of peace. If you're taking notes out to the side, write this down. To share Jesus is to share peace. To share Jesus is to share peace. Um, here's why I have no problem, all right, inviting people to our church. Here's why I have no problem uh, inviting someone to Jesus. Because when I invite someone to Jesus, I'm inviting them into a life of peace. Catch this now. Forever. Forever. If you're here today, and you're a Jesus follower, listen, you are carrying within you the greatest thing in the existence. The greatest thing in the existence of the entire universe. You are carrying in you the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God offers to us, catch this, this is the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I have no problem Inviting someone into love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Everybody look at me. Never be embarrassed to invite someone into the kingdom of God. Never be embarrassed to invite someone to church. Never be embarrassed to invite someone to Jesus. Because to invite someone to Jesus is to invite someone into a life of peace. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Be an ambassador of blessing. Be an ambassador of the Jewish word, the Hebrew word, is shalom. Listen, Jesus is our shalom. Jesus is our prince of peace. It could be you're here today, and there's never been a time in your life where you fully received the peace of God into your life. The peace of God is a person, and his name is Jesus. This is, this is what makes Christianity different than every other faith in the history of mankind. And if you're a Sun Valley person, you know what I'm about to do. But all other faiths can be summed up in the word religion. Religion is advice. This is what you have to do to work your way to God. Here's the problem with that. You'll never be at peace with that advice. This is what you have to do to work your way to God. Because after all, how good is good enough? But Christianity is not a religion. It's not advice on how you work your way to God. It's not advice on how you save yourself. Christianity... Is something called the gospel. The word gospel means good news. It's good news of great joy for all people. Here's the good news. You ready? When you and I couldn't work our way to God, God in love and mercy and grace worked his way to us and into the person of Jesus. This is why Jesus is the prince of peace. I can't achieve peace, but I can believe and receive it in and through the person of Jesus. As we wrap up the series, I want to give all of us an invitation again. Has there ever been a time in your life where you've said yes to Jesus? You can't achieve peace of, with God, but you can receive the peace of God by receiving Jesus. Not your goodness, but his. Not your righteousness, but his. You're not trusting in you, 
but in him. Have you ever said yes to Jesus and asked him to be your savior and the leader of your life? This is where the journey of his peace begins. Here's what I want to do. I want to enter into a time of prayer. Would you take a moment and just pray with me? Let's bow our head and close our eyes. At all locations, or if you're watching online today, if you would like to say yes to Jesus, I can help you do that right now. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, you can just pray in your own heart and mind. You can use your own words or you can use mine. He will hear you. Let's just pray together in your own heart and mind silently. Would you just say, Jesus, I need you. And just ask him, will you be my peace? And confess to him, I'm a sinner. There is no way that I'll ever be good enough for a holy God. So Jesus, I don't trust in my goodness, but in yours. I receive you as the peace of God in my life. And Jesus, will you lead me from this day forward? Would you teach me what it means to walk in your peace? And will you be the leader of my life? Thank you, Jesus. I trust you. Amen. You can look at me right here. If that was you, let me first of all uh, say welcome to the kingdom of God. Uh, the Bible teaches that you and I become a child of God by trusting in Jesus. And so I just want to say uh, welcome. Welcome to the family. And we want to help you get started on the journey. Uh, we want to give you a Bible. It won't cost you anything. You just have to get it. As the service ends today, uh, in the lobby, in all of our locations, there's an area called Next Steps. Just go there and just say, hey, I said yes to Jesus. They'll give you the Bible for free. Uh, answer any questions you may have. Uh, there's some instructions we put at, at the front of this to help you better understand the Bible and help you get started on the journey. So I want to encourage you to do that as the service ends. Uh, if you're watching online and you said yes to Jesus, just send us an email at yes at sunvalleycc.com and we'll be happy to connect with you and send you the Bible as, as well. Um, I want to take a moment and just speak a blessing over you and then I want to pray for you. All right? So I'm going to take a moment and stand. You guys can remain seated, but I want to just speak this blessing over you. Would you look at me here, all locations? May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may he make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace. Let me pray for you. Father. Uh, give us wisdom of these things. May we be full of your peace so that we can be people of peace in a world that desperately, desperately needs it. Fill us with your spirit. May love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control just be part of who we are. May we be peacemakers and in that be called your children. Father, teach us, we pray. For those who said yes to you today, help us help them as they start their journey. And may we all grow in the knowledge of your love, mercy, grace, and truth. Teach us, we pray, and it's in Jesus we trust. Amen.